Good morning, saints. Okay, we can do a little bit better than that. Good morning, saints. Good morning, sinners. There's a reason for that today because today we'll be looking at a scripture passage about wheat and weeds and the affirmation, the understanding that we are both saints and sinners and uh, that's the way our world is and how we can claim that and understand our role as God's people in the midst of that. Uh, my name is John Simmons and on behalf of this congregation as one of the pastors here I want to welcome you. Uh, we'll be led today Jennifer Intrigan, the chair of our worship committee and our musicians. We appreciate their leadership but we are here that we might do liturgy which is the work of the people that we might join together and in, in looking for and living out what God would have us to be doing in our lives. The attendance registration pad is in each of your pews. If you'll take this opportunity to pass that down your pew and sign with your uh, name. And if I've not been in touch with you, if you'd put an email address and a telephone number, I'll try to be in touch with you this afternoon. The announcements in your bulletin, and there are many of them, as we be it's almost the beginning of school again, and as we begin to ramp up the school uh, for school coming and for the, the church calendar be to become busier, there are many uh, things there that you would want to know about. I particularly want to bring to your attention that section in the bottom of the, the right-hand column about the back-to-school drive and the packing the backpacks and the blessing of the backpacks. Uh, for the last several weeks, we've been collecting supplies for backpacks for two different organizations, Woodward Elementary School and Sandy Spring Communi Community Ministries. There's a, there's a packing list. We would hope that we'll have, uh, be able to put together by next Sunday and for next Sunday 100 backpacks. Uh, if you'd like to buy the things, uh, today is the deadline to bring the things by the church. It's also the deadline if you'd like to instead make a contribution, you can make a check out to St. James uh, for called Back to School on the line item if, you'll, if, you, if you'd like to do that, if that's more convenient, because we'll always need extra supplies and some of the items listed on here that go in each backpack will, will not be uh, gathered. And so if you'll either uh, take advantage of that, but today's the day, either this morning or if you come to the um, food trucks tonight, if you want to bring the, the items then for the, uh, the shopping list uh, for our church. Uh, then next Sunday, during Sunday school, uh, 945 will be, well, I'm not sure where we're going to do that. It just occurred to me the fellowship hall is still out of in the parlor, we'll be putting together, thank you, Jennifer, uh, we'll be putting together the backpacks in the parlor next Sunday uh, for those of you that would like to come and participate in that. Uh, and then during, at both of the services, uh, we'll be blessing the backpacks. That's both the ones that we've put together that are going to, uh, in, as mission work, but also any children who would like to bring their backpacks, next Sunday we'll have the blessing of the backpacks. And so all children are invited to bring their, their backpacks to uh, the worship service uh, next Sunday morning. Uh, Diane McCann was scheduled to preach today. Uh, Diane's a former associate here. Her brother died this last week, and Diane needed to be in Michigan to take care of those arrangements, and we'll have Diane to come back at a different time. You see that announcement in, in the bulletin, and many of you that get constant contact with the prayer concerns know about Diane and her brother, and we want to keep Diane and her family in our prayers. Um, the, um, we, we also are here because God called us to, to be in tune with God's way in this world, to, to be able to claim a path and a tune and an understanding of what God wants us to do. And we do that in worship as this work of the people by both connecting with God and connecting with one another. 
So I would invite you at this time to, to stand and to welcome those who are worshiping around you. May God's peace be with you all. Uh, we are also here so that uh, God's spirit and presence might be with each one of us. And so I would invite you now to join in a time of silent personal prayer as we each one pray for God's presence in our worship, but more importantly, in our lives. Let us pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Has it been a tough week? The Lord has been with you in all that has happened. Open your eyes and see God's wondrous love active in your life. Become with confidence and hope in the presence of God. Amen. Please remain standing for hymn number 694, Come Ye Thankful People, Come.
Please be seated, and the children are invited to come forward at this time. I think Miss Aaron has something, or Dr. Aaron has something in her backpack. Uh, there's something green coming out of her backpack, and the children are invited to come forward at this time. cool being here between these two big pianos, isn't it? It's pretty exciting. So once there was someone who said such wonderful things and did such amazing things that people began to follow him. And everywhere they went, he talked about this special place, about a special way of being with God. And he called this place the kingdom of heaven. And one time they just had to ask him, what this kingdom of heaven was like. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a bit of garden where seeds have been planted. <laughs> so I brought in a bit of garden to for you today. This is actually from my garden. Can you see it here sticking out? So here's a bit of my garden. You see the earth down at the bottom? And I had to leave home for a couple of days this last week. And so while I was gone, something happened in my garden that I was not looking forward to and hoped wouldn't happen. But guess what happened? The weeds grew up. So you see, uh, this is actually a bit of lettuce. You see the lettuce here? And this is basil here. You guys, can some, can some of you smell it? Let's pass a few of these back and give that a good smell. It smells really good. Yeah, they, they do. They, make, they put it on pizza or sometimes on pasta. You can pass that around. It smells really good. Doesn't that smell good? This other stuff, though, that's in here is not basil. This stuff right here smells really boring. Actually, it kind of smells like the basil because it's been next to it. But it's, it's not basil. And if I put that on my food, it would not be good. So what are all these other things that grew up in here? They're weeds. Those are not what I planted. Where did they come from? Yeah, different plants that are nearby. Their seeds fall into the ground with my good seeds, don't they? And they get all mixed in there, and then I can't tell them apart. Well, you know what would happen if I tried to pull the weeds out of these garden, this garden right now? The plants would come with it. The basil and the lettuce would all come out too. Because look, if I pull on this, look what happens to all the other roots. They come with it, don't they? Do you see that? Can everybody see? Here, you can hold it up. See what happens when I pull on this weed? Oh, all the other stuff comes with it. That's not good, is it? If I want to have basil, what am I going to have to do? Cut the weed. If I cut the weed, it'll all come up. So what I have to do is I just have to wait. Because right now, the lettuce is still growing, and the basil is still growing, and it's doing just fine, isn't it? If I just let it all grow together for a while, then when it comes time to harvest the basil, when it comes time to pull it out, guess what? I can pull the basil apart and set it aside and wash it and eat it. And the weeds I can toss out and hopefully toss them away from my garden so we don't have another instance of weeds growing again next year. Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven was like that, that sometimes bad things grow up all around the good things. Does that ever happen for you in life? Bad things grow up along the good things? And Jesus said, it's okay, just let it grow. It's like that song from the truffula trees and the Lorax, let it grow. He says, just let it grow. And later you'll be able to pick the good stuff out and throw the bad stuff away. And I think that's a pretty good lesson. What do you think? Let's say a prayer of thanks to God together. Dear God, thank you for the growing things. 
Help us let them grow. And keep all the good things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you are second grade and younger, you can come with me to children's worship. If not, you can join your parents. All right? This morning, our scripture lesson comes from the book of Psalm, chapter 139, verses 1 through 12 and verses 23 through 24. This can be found in the Old Testament section of your pew Bible on page 710. Again, this is Psalm 139. Now hear this word from Holy Scripture. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the word from Holy Scripture for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As a Christian community, we come together in prayer. We pray for those among us, those far away, those names we hold deep in our hearts, those names we speak aloud. We include the names listed in the bulletin and those names listed on the whiteboard outside in the narthex and outside of the church office. Billy Mears, Barbara Mitchell, Lawrence Montgomery, Dot Moore, Linda Stevens, the family of Susan Elmore, and the family of John Lauren, brother of Dr. Diane McCann. We join together in the call to prayer into my heart. Dear God, you made the earth on which we stand, the air of which we breathe, 
and the beauty in the sky we stand beneath. How vast is your creativity. How immeasurable is the delicate balance and detail in every one of your creations. And yet, you chase after us like a shepherd who watches over his sheep. You know us each by name, and you pour out your grace through your redeeming love. Father, you long for us to recognize your imprint on all we see, to take hold of freedom from the boundaries of our humanity, and to be redeemed to walk again with you. Lord, let us now play our part in your kingdom's life. May we take your light into the darkness. May we give testimony to your redeeming work in our lives and love beyond the fringes of our own small lives. Living by the Spirit, may you work through each of us to reach out into a hurting world And now, with the words your son, Jesus Christ, taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A week ago, Saturday, Father Richard Rohr, an Augustinian monk, uh, had a, um, or Franciscan monk, had a, a devotional, and I follow him regularly, and in the devotional he had a creed for rebuilders that's printed on the right-hand column of your bulletin. And I want to in, invite you in just a moment to stand, but not yet, because I wanted to give you a, a little bit of background. When I found out uh, that Diane McCann was not going to be here to preach and started thinking, well, what, what might need to be said today? And, and I knew that the scripture that she was going to preach on was the wheat and the weeds. I also wanted to, to talk about or to focus on this creed for rebuilders. Uh, this is an extension of the Chapel Notes article that came out this last week where I, I talked about the, the second and third paragraphs as a part of that creed for rebuilders. The, the, if you look at it, that second paragraph, we believe that we are, first of all, a people, God's movement in history. And what a great affirmation of faith that was for me to be able to see that I'm a part of this church and the United Methodist Church and the, the Holy Catholic Universal Church that's a part of a people, God's movement in history. Uh, but then also I wanted to, uh, today, as we talk about the, the wheat and the weeds, the, the saints and the sinners that, that we are and the world is, there's a paragraph in there. Uh, sometimes that's hard for us to claim and to understand and to see how uh, the good and the bad are at work in our lives. And there's a paragraph that begins in the middle of that Creed for We Builders. Uh, we agree to bear the burden and the grace of our past. The burden and the grace, the, the, the troubles and the difficulties and the tragedies and the unexpected gifts that are our lives and that to claim that and to honor that as who we are that is what is as this creed for rebuilders says including even the broken things of our life um, we're here also today to claim the broken things uh, so at this time i'd like to invite you to stand as we uh, say together this creed for rebuilders printed in your bulletin on the right hand side let us join now in affirming our faith through a creed for rebuilders we believe in one triune god there is one body one spirit one and the same hope one lord one faith one baptism, 
one God who is Father of all, over all, through all, and within all. We believe that we are, first of all, a people, God's movement in history. We believe that our individual lives and our personal growth are for the sake of generations to come after and built on the faith and the bones of those who have gone ahead of us. We believe that we must build on the positive, on what we love. Creative and life energies come from the belief and from commitment. Critics must be first believers who have learned how to say an ultimate yes. We agree to bear the burden and the grace of our past. We agree to honor what is, including even the broken things of our life, ourselves, church, state, and all institutions. Their dark side is a necessary teacher. We are committed to build a world of meaning and hope. We recognize the clear need for destruction of all idolatries that make worship of God impossible. True rebuilding must follow this temporary but necessary unbuilding. We believe in a personal universe where the divine image shines through all created things. It is therefore an enchanted universe where we can always live in reverence and even adoration before the good, the true, and the beautiful. Along with Paul as Christians, we believe that Jesus Christ is the clearest image of the unseen God. In Him all things cohere. All opposites are overcome. He is the head of the living body, the one in whom all things are reconciled and overcome. Please be seated, and I want to invite the ushers to come forward at this time. Uh, I would invite you to remember the ways that we are called to be God's recon reconciling agents in this world, to, to help those who are in need, to give love to the lost, to, to be there for others. And we do this with who we are and with what we have. And so I invite you to give now generously.
Please remain standing as you're able for hymn number 128, He Leadeth Me, the first and second verses of number 128, verses 1 and 2. Please remain standing for this morning's gospel lesson. This reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, and verses 36 through 43. This can be found in the New Testament portion of your Bible on page 17. Now hear this reading of Holy Scripture. He put before them another parable, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. This is a reading from Holy Scripture for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Please be seated. The 
what does it mean to be shining like the sun with righteousness? That's what I want us to look at in terms of wheat and weeds today. Let's pray. Gather us together, all of who we are and all of your creation, Lord. Gather all together. May there be less of me and more of you. More of your words that shine through and are seen as your word for us in our lives, your way, your path. Be with us now. Amen. I think it was Thursday morning, I got a a picture on my smartphone. It was a a picture that Stan took of a hawk that was sitting on a uh, workbench outside our construction, outside the fellowship hall. It was on a um, sawhorse. Stan got up real close to it and And it was a beautiful picture of a majestic, powerful bird right outside the church offices, right on the way to the fellowship hall uh, on that sidewalk. Um, I I thought, what a beautiful picture. And, And it reminded me of a sermon illustration that I used a couple of months ago from Barbara Brown Taylor. Uh, Barbara Brown Taylor talked about her husband's fascination with the hawk. That, that they'd be driving along in a car. He'd be driving, she'd be in the passenger side, and he'd see what he thought to be a hawk, and he'd, he'd cream over the steering wheel, and he'd be looking up in the air, and she'd be yelling at him, What are you doing? Don't you know we can crash? Uh, if you want to know about birds, I'll buy you a book. And they continued on their way, but he never stopped for to stop looking for that 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 hawk those birds in the sky and and figuring out what they were and Barbara Brown Taylor's point was that there was a three-month period during a summer when their schedules had them going in different directions and separated from the sump for the summer and to her surprise when she was separated from her husband she found herself noticing hawks, even looking for hawks. And and she said it was as if his way of looking at the world had become now her way of looking at the world. And that's part of why we gather and worship every week, so that that we can see the way that God sees, that we can know as God knows, that we can love as God's lo- as God loves, that we can put on those lenses and live that life in our life. And then I noticed the caption that Stan had written underneath the hawk's picture right out there by the playground, right between the offices on the sidewalk. The caption read like this, Chicken pen anxiously anticipated uh, by as an addition to the St. James facility. You see, the preschoolers have uh, hatched some chicken eggs, and they're going to be housed in the garden of our church uh, preschool playground beginning in August or September when the preschool starts again. And the, does the hawk already know that the chickens are coming? This beautiful, majestic uh, animal, this, this example of seeing faith and looking at the world through different lenses now takes on a more tragic and evil and dire understanding Because unless there's a roof to that chicken pen out there, that hawk will find meals galore out there. I I bring that up because it fits with what this lesson is about, about wheat and weeds being together. What um, Aaron talked about and what Jennifer read and, and what we've been indicating all day today. There's this, there's this story of Jesus about 
wheat and weeds growing up together. And, and the hawk for me is an example of, well, is it good or is it bad? Is it, is it a, a, a good thing? Or if it goes about destroying our children's chickens, then it's a tragic thing. And often that is the way in our life also. It was the, the hawk that I was thinking about when I, when I focused on that part of the Creed for Rebuilders because we are a combination of good and bad. And the world around us is too. It says, we agree to bear the burden and the grace of our past. We agree to honor what is including even the broken things of life, ourselves, church, state, and all institutions. Their dark side is a necessary teacher. Their dark side is a necessary teacher. You see, Jesus is indicating that we need the weeds, and the weeds are part of what is. And I want to also tell you that Helen and I have been gone for three weeks from our home and two weeks on vacation and a week at pastor school this last week. And when we got home, the bank on the side of our house was covered with weeds. We spent so much energy pulling and killing weeds. I have nothing good to say about weeds today. Nothing. I, I don't care what Jesus said. Those weeds... Those weeds had to die, and I want wheat in my life. And that's what this parable is for me about today because, because we have in our life this combination of the wheat and the weeds, and it is what is. Um, sometimes we get focused on tearing out the, the, the weeds and making our life pure and and I think the message of Jesus today that all of us need to hear is, be careful how you pull out the weeds because you'll also be destroying the wheat and the harvest. Um, on the side of the road is what you drive around. You may see what I see, which is what's really weeds, but they're also wildflowers. And they are part of God's beautiful and good creation. And the sign for the day is, do not mow. I think that's the message for us in our lives. That we need to be careful how we become judgmental and we decide too quickly what is a weed and what is wheat. Um, I ran across a quote that I've been pondering now since I read it several weeks ago. It says, um, uh, great issues are going to come up in our life. The problem, the issue is, what are we going to do with the, the big issues that show up? Because our human response often is to have a small answer to a big issue. Let me give you a couple of examples. Um, a child is to be born, and, and the parents are all concerned, consumed with buying all the things that they need and painting the room and, and uh, getting everything ready, and then there's a baptism to be planned, and, and we get, and all of those things are important, but they are not the big issue which is the gift of life in our midst. Someone dies. Someone we love. Or there's, a, there's an illness that's unanticipated. Something, one of those burden big issues shows up. And, and we come up with, with small responses, small answers. They're important, but they're, they miss the big issue. Small things. Well... An obituary has to be written and a, a service has to be planned and, and family dynamics have to be negotiated and there are always going to be family issues. But those are the small responses to the big issue, which is uh, there's a loved one that's gone and can we be grateful for the gifts that were given? Or um, a marriage is happening. And we get caught up in the, 
and uh, what's the guest list going to look like and, and all the parties that are going to. And we fail to see the big issue, which is um, in sickness and health, to love and to cherish till death us do part, that there's this covenant being made, and yes, we are wheat and we are weeds when it comes to carrying out the basic promises of our life. Why do bad things happen to good people? I don't know, but that's a big issue. And sometimes we're going to need to pay attention to wheat and weeds and not be so quick to assume we know what is bad and what is good. Perhaps God's Spirit has a way of moving among us. And perhaps their dark side can be a necessary teacher for us. Nadia Bowles Weber is a Lutheran pastor in Denver, Colorado. Some of you might have read some of her stuff or maybe even seen her. Um, Nadia Bowles Weber is not your normal uh, looking, sounding pastor. Um, sometimes, well, let me, let me put it in terms that um, Bishop Sue uh, had a, there was a, a question and answer period at pastor school this last week. Bishop Sue, our Episcopal leader for North Georgia, and uh, Bishop Lawson Bryant, the Episcopal leader of the South Georgia Conference, had a question and answer period, and, and they talked about their call, and, and Bishop Sue said she grew up in the Methodist church. She, she learned uh, what it was to be a Methodist, and, and she thought that that could be summarized by saying, be a nice person. Just, just be wheat, uh, accentuate the positive, do the things that are good, pay attention to what is nice and good. And she's learned that the message of Jesus is more than that. Um, let me say about Nadia Bowles Weber, when I, when I read what she writes and when I look at what she looks like covered, she's, she's an athlete. And she's covered with tattoos, and she shows off her tattoos, and she doesn't hide anything. She's the pastor of a church called the Church for All Sinners and Saints in Denver, Colorado. And, and Nadia Bowles Weber, well, I don't know if she'd fit into my definition of nice, but she, I think, reminds me that, that nice is a four-letter word, and we can limit, it can be a small answer to a big issue. Nadia Bowles Weber, um, as a Lutheran pastor, was getting ready for All Saints one year. She uh, was looking for, hungering for, some heroes in her life, some saints that she could look up to and, and learn from. Uh, she and a friend were walking around in downtown Denver around uh, all, right before All Saints, and and she noticed a, a church that she hadn't really seen before. It was, it was an, uh, a, a very unusual looking church. On the roof of it, it had the letters K-P-O-F because the name of the church was the Pillar of Fire. And it was in pink letters on the roof. And it looked like what it was, which was a combination of a radio station and a Pentecostal church. They went over to look at the placard that was at the Pillar of Fire Church. And it said that Alma White founded the Pillar of, of Fire Church in 1901. <gasps> Nadia Bowles Weber was so excited. A woman started a church in Denver, and it went on to say she was the first female bishop in the United States at the Pillar of Fire Church in Denver, Colorado. She got out her phone and she looked at uh, some more information, intrigued. Maybe this is the hero that I've longed for. And it had Alma White, uh, June the 16th, 1863 to June the 26th, 1946. Founder of Pillar of Fire Church, in Denver, 
And she's going, oh, this is so good. And then it went on to say, and she was a feminist. And for Nadia and Bowles Weber, this was like a super, yes, this is so good. And then she said, wait for it. She was an ardent supporter of the Ku Klux Klan. She was anti-Catholic. She was uh, anti-Semitic. She was a racist. And she was anti-immigration. Oh, and Nadia Bo Weber, in my reading, there was a four-letter word, and it wasn't nice. She called up an Episcopal friend of hers, and she complained. She said, oh, I found this person, Alma White, and, and I was so excited, somebody that we could really claim and latch on to, a hero for my life that I could look up to uh, that was going to uh, give me uh, someone else that we could add for our All Saints service. And her friend, the uh, Episcopal priest, this good friend, said, uh, send me her name because I'm going to include her at our church in the Saints for All Saints Day. Nadia Bowles Weber said that she kind of hung up the phone abruptly. She did not like that response why can't there be some good models in her life, some heroes that she can claim? And then she remembered the words of Jesus when he said, you know, the last are going to be first and the first are going to be last. And, and uh, it's a Samaritan that turns out, an outsider, a foreigner, a heretic that turns out to be the one that's good and helps the man on the side of the road. And it's not for the, those that are in the fold, but for those outside that the, the lost sheep and lost coin and lost sons, they're the one that's about. And oh, by the way, prostitutes can be good dinner guests. And she comes to realize that it's wheat and weeds together. It may not be the way that we thought it was going to be. And the parable of the wheat and the weeds is be careful that we get judgmental. Does that mean we have no standards, that, that there aren't some real weeds in the world? I want to remind you, Helen, I spent all day yesterday dealing with weeds, and they are bad. There's, there's nothing redeeming about this bank covered in weeds. We as Christians have standards. It, look no further than the Ten Commandments or the Great Commandment. Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Are we doing those things? Are we living that in, as our life? As, are those the, the models? Is that the direction we're heading in? There, there are wheat elements for us to follow, and among it will be the weeds. And we live in a world, and sometimes that's you and me that are looking for and claiming this, this shadow side that's informing our lives. Um, also speaking at pastor school this last week was a guy named Junius Dodson. He's the general secretary of the Board of Discipleship for the United Methodist Church. Junius Dotson, there's a program that the uh, discipleship has, is promoting. It's called See All the People. It gets its phrase from that thing that we learned, some of us learned in Bible school. And, and I want to invite you to, to form your hands. You know how this works, where you interweave your fingers? Everybody, if you do that, please, if you'll put your fingers together, interlace them, and then your your uh, index finger, make a steeple because you, I think you know how this going. And I want to invite you to say this with me. Uh, here's the church and here's the steeple. Open the door and there's all the people. The change, the difference that Junius Dotson explained to us is the nature of the church which opens the door to see all the people, not just the ones that are gathered here today in this place, but to see all the people, 
all the people. Walk out into the world and see all as a part of God's good creation, as, as a combination of wheat and weeds, and all means all. All means all that we're all called to be a part of God's plan, that we're all to, to claim the wheatness of our life and know that there's an evil one at work and there's going to be uh, seeds of weed scattered all around us. That bank is going to have seeds of weeds until the end of time. But our job is to allow all to mean all and to claim the, the goodness and the fullness and to not be so quick to judge uh, who's bad and who's good and, and who gets separated out and, and allow God in God's own time in the fullness of the harvest to claim the, the fullness of creation. All means all. Our closing hymn, our hymn of dedication is Hymn number 384, it's one of the greatest hymns of the church, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. It's a way of, of claiming what the sower has given to all of us, which is the, the gift of the good seed that can grow and grow in abundance in our lives. If there are any here who would unite with this church by transfer of your membership or by profession of faith, I invite you to come forward, and, and for any and all, this altar rail is open as you, as you claim the fullness of God in your life and as you leave this place to claim that all are God's children. Number 384, love divine, all love's excelling. We sh will you stand as you're able?
nice is nice, but it's not full of what God is up to in this world. So, brothers and sisters, go now into the world and see all as God's own and as God's good creation. And may God's love and peace and joy go with you and let it be shared with a world in need. Amen.